this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate the terms of trade. My name is Mike Fladlin, and I blog at microeconomics.blogspot.com. Assume that there are only two countries in the world, and there's only two things that they can produce. P, pause, and pause. Over here, they can make pause and haws. And when they make pause, they give up one haw. And when they make one haw, they give up one paw. The marginal rate of transformation is one to one because the goods are perfect subs. Over there, they can make two goods, haws and paws. But the marginal rate of transformation is different. Whenever they make haws, they give up three paws. Whenever they make a paw, they only give up one-third of a haw. Let's use the output over method to determine who has the comparative advantage. When I use the output over method here, you can see that the haws and paws trade one from one. But over there, whenever I make a haw, I give up three paws. And whenever I make a paw, I only give up one-third of a haw. Thus, over there, they have a comparative advantage in making paws over here. Let's plot the opportunity cost for here. As you can see, I've drawn what I call the opportunity cost curve, or the limit curve, as one-to-one -one along that line. Now I'm going to add the three to one opportunity cost curve for over there. As you can see, when I produce three paws over there, I give up one haw. If I shade the area in between here, any one of those infinite number of trading possibilities would consider mutually beneficial trade for this country. But I choose a whole number such as five to three or three to two. So now let's just see if this makes any sense. If they trade at their comparative advantage and they give and over here gives up two haws or three paws, they are now consuming above their original production possibilities curve, so there they came out ahead. And over here, if the country over there gives up three paws and they get two Pause in between, they are now consuming above their original trading possibilities curve, so they're way out ahead. If you do this for any set of production possibilities curves, you'll find that he haw, he haw, he haw always works out like this. My name is Mike Fladlin, and this is Microeconomics. Thank you very much for your time.